as chemists, we know that stoichiometry is very important. So for a redox reaction, we must be able to, in order to know the stoichiometry, we need to be able to balance our electrons that are getting transferred. So like the number of uh, electrons your oxidant is gaining has to be equivalent to the number of electrons the reductant is giving away. So let's do an example. Um, OK, so suppose I have this reaction. We know that iodide, iodide, aqueous. So these are all aqueous. I'm not going to write aqueous, but imagine I did. So iodide reacts to permanganate. So we know manganese is 7 plus in permanganate. And then it forms I2, which is a solid, or it could be, I guess, in solution too, and manganese oxide. Oops. Ah. Manganese oxide, which is a solid. So aqueous, aqueous, solid, solid. OK. So the, uh, what we want to do first is identify what our uh, half reactions are. So for this one, iodide is going to I2. So again, this is not balanced. So this is our anodic reaction. And then our cathodic reaction will be the reduction. So manganese or permanganate is getting reduced to manganese oxide. So these are our half reactions. So step zero. Step one, we must balance non-hydrogen, non-oxygen atoms. These are, so the H and the O come from if you're doing your redox reaction in water. In organic solvents, you're never going to really have H's and O's transferring around unless you add acid or base or something like that. So, but this is just a general idea for what we're doing here because we're operating mostly in water. So for this oxidation reaction, we just need two. There, two and two. A, OK. For this one, our manganese is already balanced, so we're already good. I'll put a check mark here. It stays the same. OK. Step two, then you want to balance your oxygens, O's. And then so here for this iodide oxidation, we, we don't really have oxygen, so we're good. And then so for here, we have four oxygens on the left and then two on the right side. So to balance it out, we add waters for every extra oxygen. So we can go make permanganate goes to things oxide. We, we're missing two oxygens, so then we add two waters. So two oxygens, one water, one oxygen per water. Okay, step three. Then we balance out protons. And we balance protons or by adding protons to the left side. So here we have extra H's. And then so here we have four extra H's. So what we do is we add four protons on the left side. OK, so far so good. Uh, this iodide has no oxygens or H's, so we keep on going. OK. Step four, we balance out electrons. So for this one, so we, we have to balance out charge. So here we have two negative charges on the left side. This is neutral. So to balance out the charge, we add two electrons to the right. Ah, not that. Two I minus goes to I2 plus two electrons, right? So two negative charge, two negative charge. Great. And then so here again, we bounce out charge. So here we have uh, four H pluses and one minus. So overall, this is three plus over here. Over here, we have, these are all neutral, so it's zero. So to bounce out this three plus, we have to add three electrons to the left side. And that way, both sides will now be neutral. OK. And then the last step is, so you can see here we're adding protons. But in some cases, we're operating at maybe high pH, where it's basic. 
So this fifth optional step, so I'll put it op uh, optional, we'll basify it. So to basify it, we just need to add hydroxide to eliminate each of these protons. So we'll add four hydroxide to each side. And then so each four hydroxides will make water, right? So four hydroxides plus four protons will make four molecules of water. So when we try to eliminate that out, these two waters over here will cross out, and this four will cross out to two. So our final result should be we'll get three electrons plus two waters plus permanganate gives us manganese oxide plus four hydroxides. So again, this step is optional if we're writing it at acidic pH, but if we're writing it at in basic conditions, then we do the step to make sure that we have hydroxides rather than protons in our balanced reaction. Okay, so now we have our balanced half reactions. And so what we need to do is then combine it and make sure that our numbers of electrons work out. So two electrons and three electrons, the only way we can have a common denominator is we multiply this by three to get and multiply this by two. So we have six electrons overall. So our final uh, combined equation, I'll do in green, hopefully isn't dead. Okay, so multiply each, we'll multiply this reaction, half reaction by three, this half reaction by two. So what we'll get out is six iodide plus four waters plus two permanganates. And so then we'll have kind of plus six electrons, electrons over here gives us, and then we'll multiply this by three, so we'll get three iodine plus six electrons. So we don't include the electrons in the final one because you don't ever have free electrons floating around unless you're doing something fancy, right, with, you know, cryptans or electrides. So we don't include them in the final one. So multiply this by three, multiply this by two, and then we'll get out to two manganese oxides plus eight hydroxides. So. Again, kind of don't include these. We're just making sure that that balances out. So overall, we have the final, uh, this is the balanced redox reaction. So we can see everything matches up. We have six I, ID in atoms, six I minus goes to three I two. Four waters goes to, okay, four, so <laughs> two permanganates goes to two manganese oxides. So manganese is balancing out. Let's count oxygens. So we have eight oxygens here plus four. We have four plus eight. And over here we have eight hydrogens and we have eight hydrogens here. So this is our final balanced reaction. So that's how you do it. We'll do some examples in class.